Thank you. <clears throat> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sina. And um, so, so glad to be here with you all again. It's gone so quick this time. It's funny because I remember um, watching that Muji video and uh, desperately, desperately hoping that something would happen to me and desperately, desperately feeling that what had happened to him would never, uh, could never happen to me. And um, he always almost brings a tear to my eye just to kind of look at what's happened in the last um, 10 or 15 years uh, with a little... Um, or a lot of self-belief, a lot of, uh, uh, somebody asked me yesterday, actually, what is the difference, you know, what's my idea, what's my opinion on, what's the difference between somebody who makes it to awakening and somebody who doesn't. And um, what struck me was those that believe it's possible for them, you know, if other people have done it, then it must be possible for us to do it too so it just reminded me of that watching that video it was uh how things have changed since i last watched that video and i must have watched a hundred hundred thousand maybe a slight exaggeration of uh, muji videos and you know others so if you feel like that right now that it may there's a doubt inside that it may not happen for you i would really just in sincerely encourage you to look at why you think that and you know just because our mind is certain of that fact does that really mean we have to hold on to it because that is the huge difference those that are willing to um, question why it shouldn't happen in fact when we are already the self we're only waking up to that so <clears throat> a lot can happen in a short time and we begin to know it's possible and then know it's probable and then know it's definite. It has to happen if you are already the self and you want to see yourself clearly, what can get in the way of that? If there is no separate person there to get in the way, although we all experience it as if there is, then really what can slow it down once you get into that mindset? But what I, what I really wanted to talk about tonight, which I hope will be um, a useful subject for everyone, is desire, because uh, it was something that was um, very confusing for me. Um, I remember hearing all these great teachers say that there is no desire in the self. There is no wants or needs in the absolute reality. And uh, here I was listening with this intense desire for awakening uh, as I was just saying and intense desire for other things in my life at the same time things that I'd never seemed to be able to um, allow to happen for me somehow and so uh, I hope it's a useful subject what do we do with desire should we try to get rid of it should we embrace it should we um, is it something we can work with in an awakened way and perhaps most importantly, why do some desires uh, show up and others don't? And um, really what we're talking about here is the root of suffering, because if I want something and I want it really, really badly and life takes me in the opposite direction, then there's pretty much nothing more painful than that is there in our human existence. I really, really want something really and, and it's a burning passionate desire inside i really really want to be with this person or i really want awakening or I really want to get out of my job and get a better one or whatever it is um i you know really want my children to be happy whatever it is that we desire if we think life is going to go this way and then it goes off at some tangent then we can begin to really feel a sense of uh, a deep, deep pain. And for myself as well, I developed a deep mistrust of life because it seemed to do the opposite every time of what I wanted. 
So I really was curious about this. Why uh, do the masters say that there isn't any desire? And what do I do about my own strong desires at that point? Uh, how do I reconcile those? And it's true, of course, that in the absolute reality, in the formless, unmanifest awareness that is our real nature, there is no desire and there's nobody to desire anything. And there is nothing to achieve and get anyway. Not even awakening there because it is already as it is. But this deeper um, urge that arises in a human being to be free of suffering, to be free of mind, to be free of illusion, must also be honoured if the formless absolute awareness is showing up as um, a human being, taking the shape of a human being, in order to consciously recognise itself. Then this powerful driving desire is part of that process, isn't it? And if it, for me, if it hadn't been for that powerful desire, this all-consuming fire that started off as just a mere want and then became something really that was uh, like a raging inferno, uh, it, I wouldn't have had the strength inside and the willingness to uh, move away from certain thoughts. Certain thoughts are easy to let go of, aren't they? Other ones are uh, a little bit more sticky and the moment you let go and they come right back again, you know, this thing goes on. And I often thought that this intense desire for awakening was um, giving me the strength to kind of transcend these things that I wouldn't have had otherwise, helping me to see what strength was already inside that I hadn't tapped into actually at that point. And uh, at that point, I was this very, very shy, very insecure, uh, very unworthy feeling uh, person who was just desperately trying to stop my life from falling apart. And in order to do that, I had all these ideas about how life should move forward. And of course, life was very unyielding in the way it was going. And it didn't really care that my desires were getting trampled upon. But it did get me curious as to why some desires show up and others don't. And I began to realize a couple of things that I really want to kind of share that hopefully might clear up this whole subject of desire. It comes up over and over again. But first of all, can we say there are desires or there aren't desires? Can we give an absolute answer? Not so much really in the end, because as we just said, in the formless reality, there isn't any desire. But then in our human beingness, the way that the formless reality is taking shape, there absolutely is desire. There's a desire to take another breath. Later, there'll be a desire for food and sleep. Desire for awakening, as we've mentioned. Desire for loving company of a sangha like this, a family. On and on it goes. And then desire for others to wake up, desire for the planet, the species as a whole, our species to uh, take an evolutionary step, let's just say. So it's a yes and no answer, isn't it? We can't really say absolutely in the end whether desire is real or not, because it's not satisfying for the mind at all. It wants to know which one is it, yes or no. But to deny the way that the self is appearing, that pure awareness is showing up as a human being, also means to deny our desires. And desire is really the way that the manifestation moves. The manifestation grows. Plants desire more light, so they grow towards the light, facing the light. Animals desire safety and um, community, and you can see that, that they gather together in groups, just like human beings do, of course, for comfort and safety. So all over the, the planet, there is the evidence of desire. The very fact we're all sitting here now is uh, the fruit of our desire, isn't it? That we have come to um, 
listen to this powerful call within us to, to be free to wake up. So desire, it does and it doesn't exist at the same time. And if you can relax about that a little or just not be so um, confused that it's confusing, let's just say, that um, one of the amazing things the self can do is appear as a human being where there is such a thing as time, seemingly desire, all of that duality. And that this whole desire process only really seems to not work so well when the desires that we have are going against the way that life wants to go anyway. So the desires that I had that never showed up and still haven't are the ones that uh, were 180 degrees. Here's where I wanted to go with my life and here's where life was going, whether I liked it or not. And we've all had those moments. Some of them are incredibly painful. But it's painful as much as we're sure that where we think we want to go or what we think we want to have happen in our life is in our best interests. And it, this is where I really got down to the core of desire from, from my own understanding. So I hope this is helpful too, to realize that what I want as a separate being, when I think I'm a separate being, is really going to be aimed at what's going to make me feel um, happiest or uh, what's going to make me feel best in this moment right now. And not necessarily what's best for my uh, evolution uh, as a, a, a seeker of truth. <laughs> And over and over again, life denied these desires to me. Life denied this um, impulse to just get out of suffering. Whatever it is that I could do to feel better in that moment would make me feel better in that moment. It wasn't necessarily aiding my spiritual growth. And I'm sure you've had many, many experiences like this. So life goes this way. And we so were sure that it was going to go this way. This person leaves you, even though you were sure you were going to be together forever, or you were sure you were going to get that promotion and you were sort of sidestepped. Or you're sure that this time you uh, have broken through to awakening and two minutes later you're suffering again. You know, so, and you can take a moment now just to think of some of those times in your life where life has gone the opposite done the opposite to what you wanted and those were perhaps some of the most painful moments of our life so desires tend to express themselves as a separate being what i want when i think i'm a separate being is going to be directed at what can i do change or become to stop suffering because really what we really want is to be happy to be peaceful to be free we might think we want a better job or more money or to awaken to the truth that self-realization awakening enlightenment but why we want those things is key isn't it why do we want that better job why do we want awakening isn't it really because we feel that we'd feel so much better when we have it. Whether that's a new outfit of clothes, whether it's to go on holiday, whether that's a new car, awakening itself, anything at all. I want to find my soulmate. I want to um, have the job and career of my dreams. All of that because I'll feel better when I have it. Even if I want world peace, I want everyone to be happy and fulfilled and safe. There is also an aspect of us that wants that because we'll feel better when that happens than we do right now. Can you imagine a world where we turned on the news at nighttime and there were pictures of people hugging each other and um, pictures of mass satsangs where 20,000 people are sat in a stadium and 
every channel you flicked upon, you saw the same kind of thing going on. You'd be like grinning from ear to ear every time you watched the news. It would be a wonderful experience. You'd feel amazing. So life began to teach me, or had been teaching me all my life. Maybe it's truer to say I was finally able to begin to see that what I wanted as a separate being was um, skew to what life thought was best for me. And I began to investigate as, we were, as um, we've talked about before, but who is it that really had these desires and began to discover the formless ground of my being, the pure awareness that didn't really want or need anything. And for a while, all my desires seemed to disappear completely. As I saw clearer and clearer that I am not who I thought I was, everything just kind of disappeared, all my hopes and dreams and expectations and all of that. But then as that deepened into the realization of that all of this is me, there was this kind of resurgence, at least to some degree of some of these desires. Some of them never went away, just kind of temporarily did. And they became uh, more, instead of focused on uh, what can I do or what can I become in order to be happy, it was really more uh, how can I help other beings and what can I do to serve those beings and this intense desire intense stronger than even when I wanted to wake up how can I help others wake up and then even that desire began to be at odds with life itself even that and this ultimately this desire what can I see clearly I want to see clearly I want to see reality clearer each and every day. And that in itself will help me and everyone else. And that desire is still here and it's never gone away. And it's stronger than it's ever been because of it is in alignment with uh, reality. It is in alignment with where life is going. And it is in fact life calling forth that expansion. We feel it as a human being, we feel it as I want. I want this thing. But really it's life expanding, isn't it? The way that life moves is through desire and expansion and manifestation. So those desires that haven't happened for you, even if it's awakening, or just to feel good enough for a moment, whatever it is that you want, maybe have a look at why you want it and find the most direct thing that you, do you really, really actually want awakening? Or is it because you really want to be free, peaceful, happy? Would you still want awakening if it made you feel miserable? Would you still want that uh, Mr. or Mrs. Wright if um, they made you feel miserable? Would you still want the new job or to run your own dream business or whatever it is that we want. But for me, this maturing of desiring something as a separate being into what the self wants to move as, what it wants to evolve into through and as this human being and all that that involves, all my relationships and everything. Is what do I really want actually? Why do I want this? What's underneath this? Is there a more primary desire than what's showing up even? When I get down to that primary desire, by asking this question, why do I want this, actually? I keep coming back to this one simple thing, because I want to be happy. And, and then it flipped on its head. The self wants... Um, you could say the self wants to express its own innate nature. It wants to be and live free. Instead of trying to do 
or get or become something to be happy. I just want to be happy. And then those things just kind of seem to happen on their own anyway. But they're not really needed or wanted. They're just, they're just happening in agreement with your own joy, your own inner state. So somewhere in this, hopefully, is something that's helpful and useful because um, it, I was very, very confused by the subject of desire when I was uh, waking up, and it just seemed to be totally, all the desires I had seemed to be in total contradiction to what I was hearing through all these great teachers and teachings, that there really isn't any desire in the self. And struggling for a very long time, trying to resolve the desires that I still had. And some of them were getting stronger as awakening progressed. Even the desire to be, uh, to know myself in a way hasn't ever disappeared. It's stronger now than ever, much to my surprise. Have you noticed that, that the desire to be free, to live as this, to know what this is, it doesn't diminish, does it? It gets stronger as you get closer to the truth and you begin to live as that more. It seems to make sense that that would diminish, but actually it's been the opposite. Every day, more passionate, more devoted. So I uh, just want to throw it open if anyone has any questions about desire, because for me it was a very confusing subject or any questions at all uh, about anything to do with awakening, uh, feel free to um, put your hand up or just, uh, just speak out. Any subjects that you feel you're having a challenge with. And also if there's something you want to uh, share, you've broken through something, I'd love to hear about it. Anish, yeah. Hi, Helen. Hi. I think I follow you wherever you go. I'm like a family dog now. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so, uh, uh, today's talk has been very helpful. Uh, and I've been thinking about my desires as well. And to be honest, um, I don't know if I'm a sincere seeker, meaning, I really want to be happy, so to speak, like you said earlier, and I feel like awakening will bring me happiness. Mm -hmm. uh, because it seems like the external conditions in life, right, they're not stable enough to give me lasting happiness. They're always like We changing. try for a long time, don't we? We try to rearrange all this to make us happy <laughs> yes. and then keep it there. Yeah. Yes, and it takes a lot of effort. And I mean, mm -hmm. it's, there's still momentum to that, but I, I, I feel like I'm seeing through that slightly clearer every day yeah but with awakening i feel like it'll be something stable i can latch on to maybe that's also coming from a bit of ignorance on my end um, but i feel like awakening is the final thing to go out and get right um which will bring me lasting happiness so in light of those comments i mean this it's still coming from an ignorant self right wanting awakening do i how do i approach this I will, any pointers it's totally normal and natural to want to be happy isn't it and in fact maybe it's a sign of uh maturing spiritually when we realize as you said nothing out here is going to give me that and it's not going to be stable even if i get it it'll change so there's only really awakening that can provide this lasting stable happiness um but there's always two aspects to it. There's some part of us that is pursuing awakening because we want to feel peace and joy and love and all of that. Um, so we might it might feel like an egoic way of trying to get something so that I'm happy. But there's also that part of us that wants it just because it's what's true. But simultaneously there might be two reasons why I want awakening. Part of me just 
wants it because it is what's true. I want to know myself, the self. And then there's the other part of us that, yeah, and I want that so that I'm finally, people finally like me and people <laughs> finally want to be around me and so that I'm happy and so that my bills can get paid and, you know, all the other things that seem to kind of happen. And that is totally okay, isn't it? Totally. Of course, you're going to want to um, live in abundance too. And to deny that is is um, <clears throat> going to um, set, set you back because those things that we want to feel and, and um, have when awakening is really settled in, a peace and joy and all of that, those are the natural byproducts or fruits of seeing. So you can't really have one without the other. You can't have the awakening without the abundance coming as well of all, all things inner and outer. So it's not as if we have to get rid of that ego, ego sense of self that, yeah, I want awakening so that I'm finally, so, you know, my, my ego was, uh, I want to be someone special. You know, I want to be finally, you know, the most special person in the room or something like that. And it's okay, isn't it? Everybody has a little bit of that in them. And um, you don't need to get rid of that. The fact that you can see it and go, that's what's driving part of my search, part of my seeking. But isn't that also something there that just wants it because it is what's true? <clears throat> if that weren't the case, then the moment you hit a obstacle or a roadblock, you'd give up, you'd be gone. Yeah, I tried that seeking thing, but it really didn't work out for me, you know. It's within all of us, isn't it, that feeling that I want this because, you know, fill in the blank. Yeah, I was just wondering if I'm really honest to myself or not, which is why I thought I should ask you, because there are, like you said, two sides to it. One is really wanting to know the true self but also another aspect, which is like, it'll improve my life as well. And what if they're the same thing? Both the ego goes from it from its angle and the self wants it from this angle, but they might actually be the same thing. Awakening tends to produce this kind of peaceful, confident, happy, abundant, joyful human being also, doesn't it? Reflects as that, so. Whichever thing draws us initially, I think there's very few people that would come to the pathway initially just because I want to know what's true. Most of us are, I just have to stop suffering. I have to get out of this pain somehow. Very few of us ever come with that kind of pure motivation initially. That develops later, doesn't it? So it's always going to be a little mix of both. So yeah, I hope that helps to kind of reassure you. And a sincere seeker, I like that um, term. Surely just a sincere seeker would be aware of both of those, wouldn't be denying either of those kind of aspects. If I, if I say to myself that I want to awaken and know my true self, even if, I may, if, even if it made me miserable, would, where would that come from? Would, would that come from a sincere seeking or... Or is that misdirected? Or because you did say that eventually it boils down to we wanting to be happy, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's just a theoretical thing to kind of expose our motives. Would I want this if it still made me miserable? If I realized what I really am and I felt terrible, would I would I still want to embrace that? And when I asked myself that question, some part of me said, you know, hell no, you know, that's just no way. But there was this tiny little voice that went, yeah, actually, yeah, but a tiny little voice. Um, but of course, we, we, we know that it's going to make us feel um, very happy, you know, and um, consistently, unbreakably happy. So it's just to kind of, it's just a theoretical question for me to, to help me expose my motives and just appreciate that there is also, uh, two, there's two motivations for it. Is you have to ask yourself that question, would I still pursue awakening if it wasn't going to give me peace, love, and joy? You get this no, and then somewhere inside there'd be a yes, both of those, and it's okay. Uh, 
And finally, Helen, about the desires that you talked about, which life doesn't agree with or which don't come true, so to speak. Mm -hmm. is, is it fair to simply have a blanket statement said wherein, well, they are only good for the egoic self. They're going to reiterate your separate sense of self, which is why they're not coming through and kind of let go of them. Or is there more to be inquired in those desires? I think it's helpful to look. I mean, when I look to all of those that haven't happened, uh, if I really look honestly, I can see that it wouldn't have been good for my mind, my body, or my awakening. I thought, of course, it would be. I thought it would be terribly good, but if I really get honest and sort of look at where that if I'd have gotten that thing or that person, not so good, really. You know, so um, remembering what I really want more than anything is is to be free then um, I've always gotten what I want, just not the way I think life might have taken me this way and I thought it, happiness was this way, you know. If you look at those, um, perhaps the most painful ones, and, and project five years, if I'd have gotten that thing, if it had gone my way, put yourself five years in the future from there and see, you'd be quite surprised. Different to where you are now, not necessarily uh, a good thing at all. Life is, um, despite our beliefs, life is uh, always working for us. We just can't always see that. So if I, if, if I trust this and turn it around, can I just tell myself that, that the desires that, are, that haven't come about, it's good to just let go of that because I can trust life and this is not in my, even though my mind tells me that, you know, this is really what you want. It's going to make you happy. But should I, should I just let it go and say, you know what? I, I trust life and it's, I if don't know can, how. If you can let it go, then, you know, but if you can't, it, it helps me to ask it, what did I really want that for? And every time I ask that, well, if that thing happened or that person came into my life, I'd feel safer or I'd feel more worthy or you know but it the moment that personal thing would be taken away um that was gone as well so uh I began to see that they would have given me those things temporarily but only for like we started off this conversation very short time and uh, life was giving me a much more efficient way to feel worthy and safe and peaceful permanently and stably so I was getting what I want, which is to feel safe, just not in the way my mind <laughs> expected. Thank you so much. Helen. Thank you. Thank you. Good to talk to you. <laughs> uh, Amy. Hi, Helen. Hi. Hi. Uh, um, yeah. Thanks for that previous question. It was really helpful. And um, yeah, just elements of all of it so far has been really helpful. Um, I just, I wanted to ask, um, uh, as far as, uh, health goes, I'm still recovering from COVID and it's been, I don't know, I think it's been about six weeks so, so far and I'm still exhausted. And I see that like this time has been like a bit of a cooker, like it's, slowed me down and you know I've seen a lot of things I wouldn't have seen otherwise and there's been deepenings and all that kind of stuff so I can kind of see you know that side of things and yet <laughs> so I think my question is is this just something to trust and let happen or you know should I be questioning it more um or looking at different aspects or you know that um you know self-perpetuating thoughts and things like that um what are we talking about specifically here we're we talking about questioning sort of look looking at why it's taking longer than you would like to recover fully is, is that kind of what you mean yeah, I'm just, um, oh, yeah, I guess there's a, I guess there's a feeling around, like, am I, am I prolonging it somehow? Or, yeah, I haven't seen that before, actually, but 
um, in with my thinking about that. Um, so your your body might feel less than alive and energetic, but are you suffering during this period, or is it just kind of a um, because you can be in this kind of convalescing period and just kind of, well, this is a really nice break and I've got lots of time for satsang and time when I, you know, or you could be, I really need to get better so I can get back out to work. And, you know, um, probably truthfully, some mix of those is going on uh, in that, you know. Um, so maybe just questioning if there's a lot of thoughts about yes but I need to be better because and seeing maybe if we can honor how it actually is in this moment more mm -hmm. so it really depends on whether you're sort of suffering through this process I'm not talking about the physical body I'm talking about you mm -hmm. you know so um and if, if there is any kind of thought perpetually slowing down the, the healing um of the body then that would get it too so um for me just the, the whole thing that came out of awakening for me one of the many things was this humility this recognition that I don't really have a clue what should be going on right now mm. that life has proved that to me over and over again mm. and can I be with what is actually here what's unfolding even though I might have ideas about it mm. more you know what why do you want to sort of rush back into things and uh you know that's something that was quite revealing to me so sort of looking at my motivations for that mm. maybe you've been of course nobody wants to be sick or ill but maybe you've been given a little time just to sit with this breakthrough you've had uh or mm. having still yeah i think there's little practical things because i'm not driving at the moment so it's kind of like living up a hill and getting shopping and things like that <laughs> so, but you know there's other things i can do with that but um yeah i can see that definitely that really really helps yeah i think there was this there was this little thing of like oh am i am i you know is my thinking caught prolonging it or causing it somehow as well so that was good to see um A anytime we're sort of wondering about that we can just um see if we can like go into what's happening a bit more mm. maybe, maybe this is how it is for a reason right now maybe i don't yeah. know what that is maybe i don't really need to although my mind will <laughs> you know yeah i think that's that's been my sense of it because there has been so many fruits and not so much that the human would want because it's been very uncomfortable it's been like expansion contraction <laughs> and then but um but yeah i can i can see that i guess my question was underneath it like oh can i trust this <laughs> and that, that's really our entire question isn't it can i trust this life thing you know <laughs> yeah. And some of the worst experiences in my life taught me that actually, yes, um, you know, it's not necessarily going to go the way I think it's going to go. But um, when, when I do my best to allow that, there's something better out the other side of that, some kind of transformation, like the butterfly, the caterpillar and the cocoon, you know. But it doesn't mean we have to enjoy that process so much, but we can accept it more, maybe. Yeah. Wonderful. I've got um, just one more if I could ask. Um, yeah. It's a very quick one. It, there's um, a line of thinking that keeps coming back and it's shown me lots of different layers um, to just kind of the core of attachment, you know, the core of attachment and attachment wounding and conditional love, really, like it's been showing me all of that. And uh, and and yet, like the attention is is pulled there over and over again. And as I'm saying it, it's probably a similar thing that I just have to go go through it and go through all the layers, um, keep on trucking kind of thing. But yeah, I guess what I've been 
doing is, you know, inquiring into the root of what's, you know, what's underneath it all and going through the layers of emotions and sensation, attachment, beliefs, and um, and more recently with this deepening, just, you know, putting my attention back on onto the field. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if there's anything more to say, <laughs> say about that. It's just, it's very uncomfortable, it's very painful, <laughs> and... Uh, yeah. Um, are, you, are you saying some attachment, attachment, something isn't kind of disappearing? Yeah, it's been a long time, as I said, like it's taken me through, you know, into some very cool things. And um, so it's been... I'd kind of suggest this, um, looking at why you're attached to it, what does it give you? Or if it's a person, what does that give you that you don't feel you can get without that thing or that person? security mm. approval um wh whatever it is that we're looking for we're looking for it some some old ways in our life more and more we're looking from the inside these things can come from the inside out but every now and again you'll come to something that really hangs on some attachment and it's it's always because it gives us some for me it was security and um to feel approved of to feel recognized something like that you know yeah, definitely. And then, and then, and then to, to sort of contemplate that, then do I need that? Some, sometimes just to see it, uh, just to see what you've been getting from this relationship or this thing uh, mm. is enough. But if not, then just to question, why do I think it's not here right now? Mm. Yeah, okay. No. Good to talk to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Helen. Wonderful. Uh, Rob, sorry for your wait, Rob, whenever you're ready. <clears throat> Hello, can you hear me? I can, lovely to talk to you. Oh, nice to meet you, Helen. Nice to meet you. Hi, from Canada. Lovely. Um, I've been yeah, listening to your teachings for the last six months or so, and I've been doing YouTube, your YouTubes for um, any time I can, almost every other day. And uh, yeah, this raising my hand is a good practice in noticing this fear that, that comes up. Oh my goodness, I can't believe this. Yeah. So that's a good practice. But yeah. I've been at this for a long time. I started like Course in Miracles over 20 years ago. And, and then Muji and Rupert, you mentioned those guys, you know, mm -hmm. like you said, thousands of hours of. Oh, yeah. Work. And I've been doing that too. And last year, you know, I've been doing more and more, you know, hours and hours every morning. And uh, last year I was outside uh, working in the yard, and every time I stood up, I'd get a little light, a little lightheaded, and I just kind of ignored it until I almost kind of blacked out, and then I was left with a, this head pressure, and I was always feeling this head pressure mm -hmm. doing when I would meditate, just really strong right in here, like just not didn't hurt or anything. It was just, anyways, Intense. after that, it's it was, like a like it, something's very pushing. intense yeah and pushing yeah 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 exactly and then after this incident in the yard june 21st this there's this pressure in my head and um it was even i couldn't really even drive hard to walk i couldn't even you know do the yard work much anymore my wife was cutting the grass but i had gone to the doctor and they gave me an mri and a carotid artery ultrasound heart ultrasound throughout all last summer couldn't find and anything that, couldn't find anything and it brought up so much fear like I thought I was dying my wife thought I was dying it, we're, and I just I said to her this feels like hell we, it's just like summer and it was hot we had this weird hot spell <laughs> it was like this perfect storm and I you know I wasn't conscious enough to just sit with this fear I was lost in it and um I just came to point there's, I've been doing this for like over 20 years, since the late 90s. And I said, I'm done with it. I just can't do it anymore. And for some weird reason, a, a Muji online uh, course came up and my wife enrolled me in it. <laughs> my first <laughs> online retreat. She's enrolling me in this thing at the end of August. Right after you said, I'm done. Yeah, she signs I, you up for this. <laughs> yeah. 
and the only relief I could I could get was doing meditations, doing the YouTube guided meditations. Like I'd have to go to bed at six, seven o'clock. I sometimes I couldn't eat. I was just in a weird, weird space. But the only thing that would I was just trying to escape it, right? By going into these meditations. Eckhart told everything, you know, I was just yeah. going crazy. And um, and then I did the Muji one. And I had one, there was a live guided one I could sign up for, and it was at 2:30 in the morning here in Canada. And I did that one, and you know, I was just I came to that recognition of that awareness that you know I am free. For 20, 10, 20 years, I've been saying, I just want to be free. That's it. I'll be happy with just being free. <laughs> and uh, I was in this space of I am already free. Like it was a formless space. So, and it was just, I am free. You know, I, I am. <laughs> and then about a week later, I rolled over in bed at night and I was just vibrating like crazy inside. And I thought my heart's going to explode. I checked my I'm pulse. having a heart attack, right? And then I'm having yeah, a heart something attack. Yeah. I remember yeah, that yeah. myself. The, Three o'clock okay. in the morning and so I'm just, I'm, that's it i'm gonna go now i'm sure my heart's just gonna explode or something yeah. i thought i was done it was september and i thought oh my god and we were supposed to go to ontario to visit my wife's dad he's not doing very well flying out in a few weeks i'm like i gotta go to the doctor in the morning and see what this is about now but anyway i checked my pulse it was calm mm -hmm. and then i was just aware of it i thought only thing i can do is be aware of this and I just, I was sweating. I was so, I was hot the rest of the night. And I was just, I was just saying, God, 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 constantly, right? I was just like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. So I just want to ask you is, and then of course I went crazy and I started looking up online. What is vibration? So the doctor had no idea. Yeah. And I didn't even, he just gave me a weird look like, what are you talking about? And like, okay, I'll better end that discussion. And uh, went online, there was, uh, it led to Kundalini experience stuff, mm -hmm. a rising of Kundalini and all this stuff. And I ordered three yes. books and I couldn't even read them. I just, I, I can't read books anymore. I just, I just like to kind of be still. Yeah. And I just wanted to ask you, like, I kind of wanted to get it out of me <laughs> because now it's almost been a year. It's been 10 months. Mm -hmm. I still vibrate at night. It's less intense. And it's at the first two months, if I would roll over, it would just be, the more I would roll over in bed, the more intense it was. So I was just like rolling really slowly just to not bring this up. But so now I'm just being aware of oh, you know, your teachings. And I'm just like, I got your two books here. I'm dissolving ego and another one. And I'm just, I'm going in, you know, like you said, it, where does it bring up in you? And it's, it brings up all sorts of crap. Like, I'm not good enough. You know, I've always felt that when I was 12 years old as a child, I would be praying to God, take me. I'm ready to go. You know, you can yeah. take me tonight. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> I remember thinking very much, uh, very clearly, but many times that that would be so much easier than staying here and seeing this through, you know. So uh, this this seemed to be a lot harder than anything else, doesn't it, sometimes? Yeah. What, what that, you're speaking of is... Um, not so often spoken about, uh, but it's a very essential part of the awakening process, isn't it? As you have experienced, um, there is a lot, and when I say a lot, I mean the vast majority of life force energy, usually in human beings is caught up in thoughts and um, our thinking is so scattered that, um, when we begin to release some of these beliefs, especially the biggest one of all, which is that I am separate to everything and everyone else, that belief is so untrue that it costs us a lot of energy to keep on believing that. And suddenly we begin, that begins to loosen and suddenly there's this huge uh, spike in how much energy is moving through the body. And you can literally feel I remember lying in bed one night thinking I must be going in the dark by now or something because there's just this kind of uh, intenseness. Um, but it does begin to settle down. Uh, certain things do as the resistance that we've got in the body's tissues. It works through the body 
and begins to clear out uh, any beliefs that need to be seen on worthiness. You mentioned one of them. Same as you mentioned, fear, uh, real. Um, I thought I was so enlightened and then this heart thing started happening. I was sure I was going to die. You know, I, I know I'm not the body and then all of a sudden, oh my God, I'm going to die. You know, so there was, maybe I need to do a little bit more looking at that. Can I actually die? So uh, it's very normal, but it doesn't mean that it's not completely freaky when it happens because you can't talk to your doctor about it or your friend or your colleague at work. It's um, a fundamental part of awakening is this energy that um, uh, is supposed to be flowing through the body. Most of it's been tied up in thoughts. And when it suddenly starts to flow again, it, first thing it does is it hits all these little blocks of resistance. The I'm not good enough, I'm not safe, uh, all of that sort of impedes the flow. So that has to get worked out first. Sure. Yeah. And you'll notice that happening in your life, right? Things working through, releasing. Um, and uh, just being the awareness while that's happening, while the body's sort of releasing this stuff. And also some, um, if you feel called to do any kind of stretching or exercise or yoga, of course, is great. It's designed to move the body in a way that lets this stuff get released. So working with that, even just standing up straight and actually making sure your posture is right. Take a nice deep breath in and out, making sure your belly moves. It just helps the body to process what's going on. Your body does know what to do with all this extra energy because it is only returning to its natural state. It's been running on empty for so long. Mm -hmm. Suddenly all this energy, whoa, that's, but the body knows what to do with it if we can trust that process. Mm -hmm. But it's good to yeah, bring read, it Yeah, I read, you know, some, or I heard of, you know, I watched Bat Gap and uh, quite a few, inter a lot of interviews. <laughs> and um, the people were talking, like you talked about, Rick was saying about energy, some people, you know, it was kind of dangerous and harmful. So that kind of got me kind of freaked out a little bit about this rush of energy going up the spine and kind of scared I think me. if we force that, my experience and my experience with others has been that um, if we force that kind of energy awakening, try to do something to stimulate it, it quite often doesn't work so well can actually be counterproductive and sometimes even harmful. But if that energy begins to be liberated, uh, just as a natural consequence of seeing who you really are, then that's um, something that the body can deal with and knows what to do intuitively. Sometimes I would just laugh, sometimes cry. Sometimes I spend whole days yawning, just the whole day yawning. Sometimes I just feel moved to go for a really brisk walk or go to the gym or just lie down on the floor for no reason, you know. So your body knows intuitively what to do if you can um, really sort of get quiet and listen to that. Really, it's only going to show you where it hits some resistance. The only time we begin to feel any physical pain with that or the, the intensity that you mentioned is really because there's some belief that's very, very opposite now to what's true for you. You can imagine how opposite the belief is that you're not good enough to, to who you really are. Mm -hmm. Your divine incarnation of God, as we all are. And this idea that I'm, there's something wrong with me, I'm not good enough, is a real kind of um, uh, blockage in the system, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> An emergency alert came on my phone. There you go. Oh, Simple manifestation. <laughs> Jeez. yeah you mentioned the yoga i've been doing the yoga stuff like i really enjoy that kind of stuff and i gotta walk every day and yeah yeah like it seems like mid late afternoon the sadness comes up and i was like oh my god this stuff is just kind of coming up and i can't do too much exercise because the umbilical area has given me trouble like i had two hernia operations in the 90s and now there's something going on there which i can't really do too, too much strength you know any kind of it helps to crazy. to look at um I have a basic working knowledge of the chakra system. So looking at the area of the body that you've got a challenge with, and then looking at, uh, so that would probably be the solar plexus um, uh, chakra. So maybe just have a Google of that. You don't need to be an expert on chakras, but sometimes it just helps. Okay, this is about the seat of personal desires, the seat of power, 
my ability to manifest what I really want in life and any ideas that are contrary to how it is for the self that my desires manifest effortlessly are going to really mess up that particular area in the body. You know, sometimes it shows up emotionally, sometimes physically, um, sometimes financially, every which way. But just to have a look at, um, you know, you could just simply Google which chakra covers this area of the body. Um, and looking at the energetic issues, we'll, we'll show you the kind of beliefs that must be in there. We don't know so much that they're in there, but they they are, are slow enough and low enough in frequency to kind of really get in the way of this fast flowing life force energy. Yeah, it's definitely something in the root chakra area because my since 2007, I've been off work because of the lower back, yeah. the lower three discs are degenerated. So yeah, there's there's stuff going on. And, and just... Lupe's work as well is great for uh, for the body. Um, looking, she's got a whole list of um, beliefs that the body is showing us we're still holding on to. And if the body is having to show us, it's usually because we haven't wanted or been able to see ourselves as yet. So, and then just questioning it, you know, is that true for the self, for the awareness? It's true mm -hmm. for the separate being, but is that true? for me now given what i've seen to be true about myself yeah yeah i'm feeling guided just to abide in this sense of presence this openness yeah. and yeah just you know i just i'm gonna chill as soon as i said that i got this shiver over my body and so your uh, body instantly knows what's right for you yeah. yeah yeah i'm just feeling it right now it feels really really good right now but also and where can you be kinder to yourself can you be kinder to yourself yeah i'm hard on myself yeah I should have been enlightened 20 year, years ago when I got the course in 2000. Uh, it said there was a workbook for one year. And I thought, okay, I'm going to be done in one year. Thank goodness. <laughs> I didn't even get to day 76. So <laughs> oh. I, quit, I quit after that because it wasn't working for me. You know, I started again afterwards, of course, when I realized. But um, yeah, so yeah. We're just about out of time, I'm afraid. So uh, oh, I appreciate this so yeah. much. I think I'll join you again tomorrow. I think you're on. Yeah, wonderful. Yes, that's on tomorrow evening. Thank you for sharing your experience too, because it's um oh, helpful for everyone, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm so grateful for you and everybody. It's just Thank there's you. no place for this outlet. Thank you. Thank you. I'll hand the mic back to you, Sina. Thank you so much. Namaste.